Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray and I teach watercolor and today we are doing our Let's Make Art Matter for our December Merry and Bright box. We have Keenan here working the camera. And the bell. And the bell, the most important part. Don't forget it. And we have Stacy here who's our special guest. Stacey. And um, I actually met Stacy. She's been doing our tutorials and then when I put on a watercolor floral workshop in Kansas City she attended which was so wonderful to meet her in person and um, this is a special tutorial because the recipient for our Let's Make Art is Stacy's mom. Yep. So we are so grateful that she um, came here to paint with us. I invited her but it's you know what like thank you for coming because it's actually really intimidating getting on camera and painting in front of a lot of people and so I just really wanted to show our appreciation that you were willing to do yeah, that. Thank you for having me. Okay, so um, what we're doing today is we are going to paint a project and I actually, Stacy came before this and I was just like, so I don't have a project planned. And that's mostly because I just wanted to um, have an understanding about her mom and um, what she likes. So Stacy, can you tell us a little bit about your mom? Sure. Um, my mom, her name is Julie, and for the past seven years she's been uh, battling ovarian cancer and she's beaten it and had remission and then it came back and it's come and gone for the past seven years. But um, last year her doctor suggested that she go on some clinical trials, so she's been doing that all of this year in 2022 and none of those have been successful, so we're not really sure what the next... The next step is for her, but you know, throughout, I can't really differentiate a time between like when she was sick and when she wasn't because throughout the seven years, like she's remained the same. Mm -hmm. So she's still just as bright and happy now as she was pre-cancer. And yeah, she, in one of her remissions, she started a nonprofit organization where she delivers um, blankets to women who are undergoing chemotherapy for ovarian cancer specifically so that they can be warm in their chairs and those are long days and they get cold because they refrigerate the chemotherapy before oh, I they didn't know that before they put it in so um yeah so even even through all of that she like has managed to help others and reach out and every year on her birthday whether she's sick or not sick she picks a different cancer center in the United States and then she'll go and personally deliver these blankets to these women wow. and she ties a little note on them and she brought me one yes, yes I brought Sarah one oh they beautiful so these are they're like adult swaddles so they're really cozy yeah they're and like soft. that stretchy swaddle oh, blanket nice. yeah beautiful. and she writes a little note and she gives them her personal information so they can ever call her if they have questions or just need a cheerleader she's like so positive she's never lost her faith and hope and she's never complains and I mean, she's handled it better than all of us, I'll just say that. <laughs> you know, when we get mad and angry, she's like, it's fine, we got it, we got this. So. When I read your submission and um, you talked about all of that, it literally brought me to tears because I feel like, and sorry, we're gonna cry here, we've just already embraced that and we're okay with I it. I cried before. <laughs> yeah. Um, it just, the um, knowing that taking this pain that she's experiencing and using it as a tool to connect and empathize with others so they can rely on her I thought was really special and amazing and I think that's really what it's all about because we don't get to go through this human experience pain-free that just doesn't happen and so when we can recognize that we all have to experience these things that are really really hard and use that as a way to see the humanity in each other and make each other's experiences better that's what it's all about. I mean, and that's really all that we can do for each other is just to say like, you are not alone and you have me with you and um, I can be a source for you. And so, um, and I feel like that also really embodied the reason why we do Let's Make Art Matter. It was an opportunity for us to show kindness and understanding and love and support through artwork. And so um, thank you so much yes. for thank submitting you. and for, um, being willing to share it and talk about it. And so when um, we were talking about her mom before, she said that she loves teal, turquoise teal. Teal is her cancer teal. color, so okay. she loves teal. She loves bright colors. Bright Orange. colors. Orange and teal are her favorite, but she loves yellow. And her favorite flowers are Gerber daisies, so she just Aww. loves bright, happy yeah. things. 
And so um, we were talking about projects and what we should paint. And so we're gonna kind of do this together, but the whole idea is we, we are gonna do a candle. Um, and if you were saw our Sacred Shadows October box, we did a candle in gouache. So I'm gonna do something similar. We're gonna do a candle with some pine needles at the bottom. And then I figured with our bokeh element that we did in our metallic star, that can, we're gonna lean into that and allow that to kind of act as like these polka dot elements because she loves polka dots and stripes and bright colors. And so um, we're gonna kind of create, I didn't create this project before because we literally like talked about it right before we filmed. So we're gonna kind of discover it together and I'll talk through my process with you guys as I'm making decisions as I go. And that's it. Okay? Okay. Okay. Okay, so the paint colors that I'm using are the colors out of the Marion Bright watercolor box. And I'm just gonna say them here. I have leaf green, sea blue, yellow ochre, red, and we have bleed proof white. I have my watercolor postcard here. I taped it down and I put it standing up so it is a vertical orientation or a portrait orientation. Um, I have all my brushes here handy. I'm not really sure which ones I'm gonna use yet. I have a pencil so we can kind of sketch out what we're gonna do before. And it was funny because when um, Stacey was just like, oh, she loves the color, she loves teal. I was just like, we have sea blue, which is like the teal color. It just kind of, it just lined up. It just lined it's up. Meant to be. It was meant Serendipitous. to be. Serendipitous. Yeah. Yes. So I'm grateful for that. Okay, so I have a little pencil here, so I'm gonna do a little bit of a sketch of what I'm envisioning in my mind. You can do as many candles as you want. I'm gonna do three. I just decided right now I'm gonna do three. So. I'll just copy one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna go rogue. <laughs> I'm gonna move that out while we draw and then I'll put it back in. So I'm gonna do one candle kind of in the middle. And um, candles, you guys have seen candles. They all are different shapes and widths and all of that stuff. So give yourself a little bit of freedom. It doesn't have to be one certain way. I'm going to do, but what I do wanna do is make sure that I leave enough room at the bottom because I'm gonna do some pine needles. So give yourself at least half an inch from the bottom. When you do the candle top, remember to do kind of like a curved line because when we look at something three-dimensional, we see, we see the front of it and we need to see the back of it. So we do a curved line in the front and a curved line on the back. And of course, depending on how melted the candle is, sometimes they're wonky, you know. Or broken. Or broken. Someone might've hit it with a golf ball. I don't know. Have you done that? What? <laughs> Nicole it's really know. hard to draw straight lines when you're nervous. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I like to do my sketchy lines where you're just like, yeah, I meant to do it. I'm an artist and it's very sketchy. Um, and I don't have an eraser here, so I'm oh, really, yeah, oh, one. great. Oh, wow. Look at you, Stacy's more Stacy's like, I brought one. <laughs> you weren't prepared for the project, but I brought an eraser. And then I'm gonna do three candles total. So I'm gonna do one there, and then I'm gonna do one next to it and another one next to it. And I kind of did them all three different sizes. And of course, they're kind of funky. Remember, this is sketchy, sketchiness. And then this is where you can make some adjustments. So I'm gonna make mine a little bit taller because I felt like they were just a little too short. But yours might not need it, okay? So if you're looking at yours and you're like, no, 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 it's good. So once I have my three candles, I'm going to um, have like a gathering of pine needles kind of come out. So I'm gonna put a branch curve going down this way, to the side, to the other side, and then forward. And you can do as many branches as you want, um, but just remember to curve them because if they're like straight lines, that's, um, Aggressive, that's the only word that I can think of. Mm. So you want them to feel like they're kind of like that curved branch Got it. line. Recently fallen. Yeah. And then that will serve as our base. And you don't have to do each one, but just so you guys can get a feel, we'll have the pine needles kind of come off for each one. And then I'm gonna do a little group of berries right here to kind of like cover up that center. Yep, very nice, perfect. And then this is where now that we have like our base in, you can say like, oh, those candles are too big or too small or too short or too tall, whatever you need, um, make adjustments. 
Um, I'm going to just kind of sketch in the flame so I can get a real understanding of the heights. Yeah, beautiful. You're fast. I <laughs> just pause you and uh -huh. then catch up. <laughs> yeah, Try in person you don't, have, yeah, you don't have that pause function. What huh? happens if you pause there right here? So uh, oh. Done. <laughs> <laughs> Play. <laughs> Okay, so now that I have my subject essentially sketched out, remember that sketches are a guide. They're, you don't have to follow them exactly because as you're painting, you're gonna be making different decisions and all of that stuff. Now for the background, I'm gonna go for a very vibrant turquoise color, which is gonna be our sea blue. And then I will lift up some circles, kind of like how we do our bokeh. Um, I'm going to choose a red color for my candlestick portion, and then obviously green and red down here. Now, um, thinking through, now that I've like mentally assigned colors to what I'm doing, I also want to think about the steps and how I'm going to approach this project. So usually you want to do your background first and work from the back towards the front. But because watercolor is transparent, if I do a dark blue background dark down here over my pine needles, it's going to be really tricky for these pine needles and that red to stand out, right? So I have to think, okay, I want to make sure that it, there's at least a lighter value down here so these colors will show. So then I'm like, okay, maybe what I'll do is I'll do almost like a vignette feel where this, this center angle, I'll keep a lighter value and then along the edges here and here, I'll let those get darker. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so let's start, let's just start. So I'm just gonna start the painting. I'm gonna use my six, but you can use whatever brush you have. I'm gonna get my brush wet, hit it off the side of the cup so it's not dripping. I'm gonna grab this sea blue color and I'm just going to start at the left-hand corner. And then as I work my way, down and across, I'm just gonna add water to it. And that will just naturally lighten it in value. So then when we get to the candle and the flame portion, you're gonna want to avoid those completely, paint around it, and I have a barely there blue color. Now it's okay if your wash, which is what we're laying down right now, is not perfectly smooth. And by that you can get blooms, you can get hard edges, you can get texture. And I'm okay with that because we're actually gonna lift some color up anyway um, for our bokeh. So really what I wanna do here is work fairly quickly. So I'm just gonna focus more on filling it in with the values focusing more on like the left and the right. And then when I get to the bottom here, again, I'm gonna be using a barely there color with the pine needles, and I'm gonna avoid the berry section altogether. Green will show up over a light blue with very little changes in color, and if anything, it will still look green, but trying to do red on top of a blue wash, like a dark blue wash, will actually make it look purple. So that's why I'm avoiding the berries, but not the pine needles. It's a very good color for this. Very nice. I know, isn't it beautiful? Yeah. Okay. So then, what we can do is we can start lifting up some circles for our bokeh. A bokeh is a photography term. It describes when something is out of focus and pushed back. And sometimes depending on how the light is hitting it, it creates these circles um, for like the out of focus fuzzy look. So I have a paper towel here. Do you need a piece? You're welcome. And I'm just gonna start lifting. I'm gonna use my brush. And you can try and use just your brush to lift because with the brush, you have a little bit more control over the shape. But I think sometimes paper towels lift a little bit better. So sometimes I'll like shape it with my brush, let the water sit for a second, depending on how long the paint has been on my palette or on my paper. And then I'll go in with a paper towel 
and lift it up. Now, just so you know, when you lift up color, it obviously is going to have, like the circle shape is gonna go uh, be stronger on the darker areas than on the lighter value areas. Does that make sense? And I always tend to do, when I'm filming, I always go crazy with the bokeh. So just do it till you feel good okay. about it. And remember too, we have bleed proof white. So if you're trying really hard to lift up and you're just not getting it and it's just not working, then you can utilize your bleed proof white, but I'm gonna wait to do that to the very last step. I think you've mentioned this in other tutorials, Sarah. Yeah. But when it comes to bokeh, can you let your painting dry completely and still successfully get a bokeh? You can, um, but a couple things to that. When you let your painting dry and then you put water down and lift up, you're gonna get a darker edge from where the water, wherever you put the water, there you're gonna get a darker edge there, which sometimes helps with the bokeh, but sometimes it doesn't because if the contrast is too high, it automatically will bring the bokeh forward. And our job is to try and keep the bokeh in the background. We're trying to communicate something far away. And when you have too much contrast, it can possibly bring it right forward. So when you let your painting completely dry and add water, you're gonna get a ring. Um, but, so just like heads up on that. And secondly, the longer you let your painting dry, the harder it is to lift color. So if you're um, like lay down a wash like we did, like look at how light Stacy was able to pull up this color here with this bokeh. Mm -hmm. I don't, if she let that dry for a really, really long time, I don't know if she would be able to lift up that much color. You will be able to lift up some, but maybe not as much if you did it right away. When you do it right away though, it's trickier to get the really tight circle shape. So it's kind of like a, it's just kind of tricky. I don't, I, I don't think that one of the ways is better. I kind of do both. Okay. And that's why I'm kind of going back and forth between it a lot. And um, the other thing is when I have, so I did my wash and you can see I have some hard edges here. And let's say that that's bothering you and you don't really like it. Like th this one, I don't mind that much, but this one is kind of throwing my eye. What you can do is you can put a bokeh circle there and it just disrupts that hard edge. I mean, it doesn't totally make it disappear, right? Cause I'm not blending the whole thing out. But by just by disrupting that line, it just doesn't make it as strong of a line in my composition. <laughs> nice. That's beautiful. Also, that looks so good. It wouldn't hurt at all, at least for me to see an entire page of practiced bokeh. Yeah. That would look incredible. Yeah. And as Stacy was saying, like, Julie loves polka dots. So if you just want to do polka dots. <laughs> Oh, that would be fun. You can do that. Like, she'd love it. Yeah. So um, give yourself freedom. Just because we're painting this, that doesn't mean that you have to paint exactly that. If there is something that you're just like, oh, bright colors with orange and teal. Okay. You know, I got this. And paint something that just kind of speaks to you. You have full permission to do that. And I'm sure she would love to see the different variations. Okay. So I'm feeling pretty good about this. It looks great. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my candles, but you wanna make sure that at least the paint area by your candles is dry. Cause we wanna make sure that that red color stays on our candle shape and doesn't bleed into the background. So um, make sure it's dry is what I'm saying. And I'm just gonna to touch mine. I don't think you're supposed to do that, but that's what I do. Hmm. And um, actually, can you hand me that heat it yep. craft tool? I'm just gonna take a second and make sure. Nice. Smart. Thank you. <clears throat> Can you do different colored bokehs? In this or in general? Well, just in general. Can like you pull up color and then put color and then pull yes. that color? So bokeh, bokeh is a fuzzy representation of whatever's happening in the background. 
So if you have Christmas lights in the background that are orange and pink and purple and blue, your bokeh could be fuzzy. If you're outside and there's like a green field and that's the part that's fuzzy, then you would have green and white and yellow circles. Does that make sense? Yes. It is really informed by its environment and its surroundings. So depending on your scene and depending on where it's taking place, Absolutely, you can have different colored bokehs. I will say though, that the more complicated things are in terms of color and placement and uniqueness, the trickier it is to communicate that on a painting. So I try and keep things simple by just staying usually, for the most part, like monochromatic, like one color, maybe I'll go into one or two, like with the candle that we did for Sacred Shadows, I went into like the oranges and the browns a little bit, but that still was in more like one hue as opposed to a lot of different hues. Does that make sense? Yep. It's possible, but it's a little bit trickier. Okay, so I'm gonna take my six or whatever color you feel comfortable using. I'm gonna make sure I have some fresh red on my palette. And I'm just gonna paint my candle area red. That is a bright color. And I love teal and red together mm -hmm. so Especially around Christmas time. Mm. I'm saying that's a cinnamon scented candle. Okay. Do you like that candle smell? Mm hmm. Do you have like a favorite candle smell? Is there one that smells like brownies? Because <laughs> that would be. There's got to be. There one has that to be. Like sure. <laughs> There's got to be. Or fresh chocolate chip cookies. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, um, the trickiest thing with these candles is making sure that they're straight. Mine looks like it's leaning a little bit to the left and also that your edges are straight. So really just do your best, but know that I struggle with this too. So it's, it's just, it's just hard. So if you need to end up making your candles a little bit thicker than you uh, originally intended, you are in good company because that is what I'm going to have to do. <laughs> and I'm just going to go ahead and put all three in and I'm okay if they kind of bleed together. If you want to give like, if you want to leave a thin line to separate them, you can, um, or you can just let them touch and let them bleed together. I, I don't think that that would really take away from the candle portion. And then when you get to kind of where we drew out our branches, you're going to want to stop because we got to paint those pine needles. I'm going to combine mine. Now I'm not focusing too much on form on these candles. I'm kind of just doing an even wash and um, letting that do the work for me on um, creating this candle. If you want, to focus on form and creating them, making them more three-dimensional, what you would want to do is wherever the candle is turning away, that's where you would want to darken the values to show that there's form. And sometimes what you can do, like just to give a little hint of form without like going into so much, is you can just lift color out of the center and then just kind of blend that out. And just by having a highlight, in the center of the candle, it automatically is just going to create just a little hint of three-dimensionality. Could you do that on another one for us? Yep. I'll Thank do it right you. here. So I'm just taking water and doing like a stroke down the middle of my candle and lifting that out a little bit. And then kind of blending it so the transition doesn't feel like off. Yeah, sometimes just a highlight is all you need. Again, we're not going too um, detailed here. I'm gonna move this up so I can put my hand next to it for a second. And 
what I kind of like about doing that technique of just like putting in a highlight is if you don't like it, what if you do it and you're like, I actually really don't like how that looks. You can just paint over it and put the color back in and smooth it out and it's like it never happened. So I love giving you guys opportunities to make your own decisions and being like, actually, no thank you, and then put it back. No problem. Easy. Easy, easy. I'm just gonna look at my candle. Form here. Okay. And if you really want to, um, if you mix a little bit of the yellow ochre with the red, you'll get like an orange color. So if you want to add like a little bit of this orange, it's not a super vibrant orange, it's like a desaturated orange, but it will just add to a feeling of warmth. Because when you add water to your red, you'll get a pink kind of color. So if you don't want that and you want it to lean more warm instead of pink, then you can add a little bit of yellow ochre in there and that will just kind of still read as a lighter value as a highlight, but not pink. Okay, I'm gonna leave that before I mess with it anymore and I'm gonna move on and then I'll come back to it. So next we're gonna move to our flame. So you wanna make sure you have fresh yellow ochre here for our yellow. Um, now this yellow ochre color is kind of like a gold color. So if you're really looking for like a bright yellow, you'll have to use a different paint color, but I think this will work just fine. And I'm going to grab some of that. And then thinking back to the flame, you can paint the whole thing. I'm going to see what happens if I actually leave the base of it kind of white and start the yellow kind of here, like halfway up my flame. Right past your, right past your hair. Right, sorry. So. Yeah, if you can see over my shoulder. <laughs> so almost like where that flame meets the wick, it's like white hot. And then I'm gonna take some of this orange and put that at the top. So then our colors go from like white to barely there yellow, to yellow, to orange. Mm but kind of work the areas back and forth so they feel smooth and not um, too separated. And I'm gonna repeat that for all three. And again, you wanna make sure that you're background is completely dry. We, especially with this flame, we do not want it mixing with the blue background because that will create green. And the nice thing about flames too is they can be like kind of chunky or they can be like long and skinny. Ooh, or maybe even a little wispy. Yeah, there's, I feel like there's different types of flames. Oh yeah. I don't know why, uh -huh. but I see them in my mind. No, I do too. Okay. They're constantly moving. Yeah. Sometimes they hit the wick weird and there's like black smoke right above it. Yeah. So give yourself a little bit of freedom to have variation or it's okay if it doesn't look exactly like mine. There's different types of candles and flames out there. Everyone's got a different flame. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Be your own flame. Be your own flame. That's right. <laughs> um, and this actually works out well because I know that some of you have been asking to do like they really love the candle project, but how do you, that obviously has a very fall Halloween vibe. And they're like, how do I make this Christmas? And so um, even if you don't follow this tutorial, how you would transition is just the colors where like with, with Halloween things, we focus on browns, um, oranges, like blacks. And then if you want to move to Christmas, then I focus on colors like greens, reds, blues, like 
it's just a color change. So think of the colors associated with the season that you're trying to communicate, and then you would just adjust it and automatically doing that will create the feeling of, oh, this is obviously Christmas, this is obviously Halloween, or you know, that kind of thing. So, okay, we're gonna leave that for a second, and then let's do our pine needles. So I have my green, I'm gonna mix it with some sea blue to get a, like a really rich dark green. I also am going to mix it with yellow ochre to get a more yellow green. And then I'm going to do a tiny bit of red in there, which will desaturate it and make it um, like a foresty dark green. Too much. There we go. So I'm going to pull from all three colors. If you want to do the branch first, and actually, if it's okay, I'm going to move this that way. Okay. So if you want to do the branch first you can, but try and use your two or whatever smaller brush you have. What do I have here? Yeah. And do thin wispy lines coming out of it and grab from all the different greens. And remember, Pine needles are like wonky. You know what I mean? Like some go that way, some go angled this way. You know what I mean? Like oh yeah. There's some have been dried up a little bit. They might be a little more brown. Yeah. And you're just going to repeat that on all four branches. Now the ones in the front I kept a little bit shorter, but if you want them to go off your page, you can. So I want it to almost be like there's a gathering of pine needle branches holding these candles. Mm. And we did do a pine cone project earlier in the, for one of our tutorials. So if you want to do a little mini pine cones here instead of the berries, you can. Again, you guys have the freedom to adjust this and make that, this. That would be fun. Yeah. Harder probably because mm -hmm. they're tiny, but. You'd have the candles look like they're melting and then the wax is what's holding the pine needles together. Yeah. That'd yes. be intense. Yeah, Keenan, why don't you go ahead and paint that for oh, us? Oh, I already did. <laughs> I just got to find it. I saved it. And I love having, the reason why I like to have different greens to pull from is one, color variation is just always interesting, visually interesting in a painting. Two, the different colors that we mix naturally have different values. The yellow green is naturally a lighter value where the dark forest green is a dark value. And when you have variation in value, you automatically create a sense of form and depth, even like that alone. And so I always try and encourage us to have different values and colors to pull from because that step alone can create dimensionality to our painting without us having to have a photorealistic painting. And I like that. I like that too. Less work for mm. an effect is what I'm, what I'm all about. Gosh, I love these colors together. The, the teal with the red and the green. Okay, now if your green is dry, you can put in your berries. I guess I can put these back. So, I'm gonna take just my red, do a little berry swoop. And if you wanna do more berries, go for it. Like my heart is telling me that I should have more berries over here, but I'm scared to do it. Kanan, should I do it? Do it, why would you not? Okay, I'll do Fear's it. Fear's not a good reason. You're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. And Thank then you. if you guys don't like it, then you don't have to do it in yours. Uh, I'm, I'm doing this for you, really. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna do them a little bit smaller. Can you tell Actually, that those are Actually the same there? thing you told me when you ate all those snacks that you were sent. What, what did for I say? For us. I'm doing this for you. <laughs> Keenan, I know you've been trying to work out and stuff. I'm really helping you on Not your yet. journey. Thank you. <laughs> I will eat all the chocolate for you, <laughs> and you're welcome. <laughs> I don't know if you know this, but I'll find other chocolate. <laughs> I will always find the chocolate. Okay, I like my berries. I added more. 
Uh, I think what I need though is more pine needles to kind of like balance out the redness. So I'm gonna make some of these longer and a little bit more. Just to kind of like, so it's not just all red down there. And let's say you put in your berries, um, you did the one and you're like, that's good. I'm not gonna do the rest, but it still feels empty. We'll come back to that area because that's what I'm feeling right now, but I'm gonna come back and show you what to do with that. We're gonna let that dry. Okay, now we need to pay attention to our candles. So we need to put the back end of our candle in. So I'm gonna mix a dark red. So I took a little bit of the red and a little bit of the sea blue over here. And I'm just gonna do a little, like filling in kind of that back area of the candle. Sometimes it's just a stroke. It doesn't have to be a lot. And depending on the angle at which you see the candle, like if you're, if the candle is above you a little bit and you're looking at it from below, you wouldn't actually see the back rim of the candle. If you are high above the candle and looking at it downward, then that um, you would see way more of the round, like thickness of the candle. And if you're looking at it from the side, you would only see a little hint. Okay. Okay. Does that help with angles and how much to put in there? Okay. And then I'm gonna use this same dark red and actually just create a little bit of separation between the three. Mine bled together a lot, yours might not have, but I feel like I just need to mm. push them a bit away from each other. That's another opportunity to reshape a, a crooked one if you've got one. Oh yeah. I would definitely have crooked. Mine would probably just be spirals. <laughs> Actually, that would be super cool. That would be very difficult. It would. That's a lot of painting you've got to do. Yep, very nice. Looks good. Stacy, I love your pine needles. Thank you. I do too. And then what, lopsided, what we'll do is I will show you what to do in that area. Yeah, I was waiting until they the berries were dry because I didn't want to. Yes. Try. Oh, then you already know. Okay. So oh, wow. for if you saw, there's just a little bit of a white line between her berries and her candle. You want to make sure that they're dry before you go back in and fill in that area if you want separation. And if you want to put the berries in front and the candles behind, then you would paint that section dark on the candles. And then your berries, you can even lift some color out, which would create a lighter value, which will put it forward. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Weird. And sometimes you can even just do like a little like highlight on the berries. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, oh yeah, okay, that's a different thing. Blend it out. I don't think my candles are quite straight, but I'm just gonna be okay with that. I'm just going to <laughs> <laughs> I just I feel like I keep trying to like straighten them out and I end up just making them thicker and thicker and thicker. And so I'm just kind of struggling with that. Um, but I'm gonna keep going and I am just gonna tell you that it doesn't matter how long you've been painting, I struggle with straight lines. See how thick I made that? That's right, he's just a thick boy. And if there's space, you can do a tiny little black wick. You're, we're gonna get black by just mixing all the colors together. And you can just do a little line. Again, depending on the angle, you might see it, you might not. And I'm going to do one more yellow on my flame to kind of really saturate color. Yours might not need it, so take a look at your own painting and decide, I'm happy with that yellow, I'm not happy, I want to do one more layer. But just know that this color naturally leans more golden than um, like lemon yellow. Very nice, very nice.
Now, the thing that's kind of throwing my eye off is I feel like even though I did a light value blue down here, it's reading as white almost on the paper. Do you see that? Because mm -hmm. we put so many other values that this light value has essentially washed out to white. So I'm actually just going to do, if your berries are dry, I'm gonna grab Morrissey Blue and I'm just going to do work around my berries and just do a dark blue layer around it. But if you want to see me do it first before you decide like, yes, that's for me or no, that's not for me, go for it. Just know that if you touch your pine needles, the green is going to bleed. If you, you know, if your red is still wet, it will bleed. But these are a little bit loose anyway, so I'm just going to kind of go for it. Always go for it. Got the berries, now you got the teal. Got my teal, got my berries. And it kind of looks like it's set up on something when you did that. Yeah. You could even do maybe like a dark brown, like it's on a table. Yeah. You know, it's up to you. This is your painting. Could you take your brush and uh, blend the gr green of the around instead of putting an additional color there? Would that be yes. weird? Yes. No. So what you could do if you wanted to fill that up, but you didn't want to do teal, is you could just do more pine needles. So you can have the pine needles kind of come forward this way and add them and then take a damp brush and spread out the color and just putting that green value there it will give it more of a feeling of oh there's way more pine needles here so that's an option as well okay gosh i love the light that you got on your bokeh right here i just feel like it's like a spotlight coming down on yours being like oh. i agree okay <laughs> so I feel good about my candles. I feel good about my flame. You can decide if you need extra work. I'm actually going to do one little brush stroke here um, and shape it and blend it. And if I were by myself, I'd probably mess with this a little bit more, but I'm trying really hard to show you not to mess with things too much because I haven't been great about that lately. And now we're going to do, we can look and see if our painting needs anything else. So I have my bleed proof white here and I'm going to do a couple bokeh with the bleed proof white and let's just see. Let's just see what happens. Yours might not need it though because that looks so beautiful. I don't know if I would touch that. And I'm going to take this bleed proof white and um, let's just see. Is that too bright? Not for Julie. <laughs> that's, for, right. that's right. <laughs> I'm going to do an overlapping one here. And then if that white is too strong, you can always water it down, which will still create a light value. It just won't be as opaque. And here's that bleed profile. If you want to use it, you don't have to. I'm going to put my berries to dry so I can put blue on the bottom. You can use that heated craft tool oh, okay. if you want to. Oh, Dad, that's got your name all over it. Yeah. So we're going to do one more nice and vibrant like white one on the right hand side to kind of balance this one out because I, I actually kind of like how white that is. So I'm just going to do it on the right hand side too so it doesn't feel out of place. And I feel like I need a light, like a medium value one at the top right here. So I watered down my bleed proof white a little bit, or you can try and lift too, if you don't want to use bleed proof white. I like it. I'm thinking it's done. Looks good. Let's untape it. Okay. For you guys at home, Try and let it dry a good amount of time before you untape it. I usually just leave mine overnight. And there we go. Wow. I 
love it. I love how you did your flames and your bokeh background, Stacy. Thank you. They look so good. I love taking the second and just being like, well, I just made that, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so this is our project for Julie. And um, you got to hear about her and how wonderful she is. And we're so grateful for Stacy for sharing that with us and for being vulnerable enough to do that. And um, as you heard, she loves bright colors and um, she's so caring and loving. And, um, you know, so really, I think probably whatever you choose to paint, she'll probably really enjoy. And um, if you guys are not familiar with Let's Make Art Matter, we put a postcard pre-addressed, pre-stamped in all of our boxes. And that way every month we can come together as a community and show some love. And so um, if you want to read more information, we put a little information card in the box so you can read about that here. And thank you. Yeah, thank you for having me. I just, I really loved painting with you and um, Kanan. Sarah. Always a pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> and um, if there is someone that you think could benefit and could use a little pick me up, a little art hug, someone who deserves a little bit of love, we have a nomination form. You can go to letsmakeart.com, um, scroll down to where it says nominate. I think that's still there. Sure. And you can fill out that form and we will contact you. So. Thank you so much, Stacy. It was wonderful for you to come and paint with us. And um, I hope you guys take the time to make Julie smile this season. And that's it. That's all I got to say. That's it. Okay. Bye, you guys. <laughs>